Okay, so today we're going to start talking about similarity postulates, which is kind of the meat and potatoes of the whole similarity thing as far as triangles are concerned. Um, and some of them we talked about like so in most of this section, I've already told you the information from not once, but probably two or three times, trying to make sure you understood past sections. So you kind of already know all the stuff that's in this. All I'm doing is kind of fine tuning a couple of things in this section. So it should be a short video. Ah, good job. So the first one that they talk about in 7-4, and this is all 7-4 is about, is the angle 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 postulate i call it angle 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 they just say two angles because they know that you can find the third angle by subtracting from 180 because we're always talking about triangles i call it angle 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 um and basically it means that if you have congruent angles in both triangles and they only need two congruent angles in both triangles then the triangles have to be similar does not mean that the triangles are congruent because all the sides would have to be congruent for that to be the case. But we don't have to know anything about the sides to say that they are similar if all of our angles are congruent. The side angle side one says that two sets of corresponding sides have to be proportional and the included angles are congruent. I underlined my and. That is not a perpendicular sign. It's me underlining the and because you need both of those things to have happen. Um, the two included angles have to be congruent, then you know the triangles are uh, similar. And then if you have three sides, which are three sets of corresponding sides that are proportional, then the triangles are similar. So I went through the book and I tried to come up with a couple of problems. Ta da! These are from the class work exercises um, out of section 7.3 that would kind of demonstrate what we're talking about and make sure that you don't make a mistake that is a simple mistake to make and very popular mistake to make that I don't want you to make. So I'm trying to make sure that I take care of that before I set you off on your own. Okay, so what we're talking about this one, the directions say to state the similarity and verify why it's true. So basically they want to know which postulate it is and for you to state one triangle is similar to the other one, if that's the case. And so we have to kind of prove that using a postulate kind of thing, but we're kind of doing that behind the scenes. We're not actually drawing out the whole long proof. You notice I haven't given you any proofs in this chapter at all. Isn't that nice? Can't say it's going to stay that way, but for right now we're good. Um, for this one right here, they gave us two sets of sides, and that was about it. Well, there are two of these that go by sides. So one of these has an angle and the other one has a side. There is no way we're going to get that. But we do get the included angle because vertical angles are congruent. So woohoo! That one we've got. So I can go ahead and mark my angle's congruent, and now we can see if we can get that whole postulate thing going. So if I put some fractions together, so if I like to put 12, because it's my small one, over 15 and 10 over 18, that's what? Four over five? That is not four over five. So this may be a no. But if I were to instead switch the two that these go with and make this one my 10 and this one my 12, this is now two over three and that is two over three and all of a sudden we are a go. It's important that you write this out so that you can see number one that it works proportionally. But it's really important because it's gonna help you write the similarity because that's where everybody makes their mistake when they start writing similar triangles. You can't just pick willy-nilly any side you want, any angle you want at any time. That's not the way this stuff works. So when I start to write these similar, I would say triangle SNX is similar to triangle 
Now, SN was my first side that I used, so I have to make sure it matches up up here. It might not have been the best one to start out with. My next side was the NX, right? So that means that that's the 12, which corresponds to the 18. So that would make this my N. So where my N is, is where I put my M. So that means my other side must be the R. So it must be RMX. You've got to make sure you put corresponding sides together. So my other side was the X to S was 10. X to S is my last one here, going from there to there. So my X to R must be the 15th, which it turns out that it is. Now, how do we know that that was true? It was verified by, or I think your book puts a comma and then just writes that it's true by side angle side. Because we have two sides that are proportional that have an included congruent angle. That one is side angle side. It does not mean that it's always going to match up like that. So remember, I originally tried the 12 with the 15 and the 10 with the 18. That's usually how they match up. That's why I tried that one first. So you need to be sure you kind of check them and play with them and make sure that they work. For number seven, they gave you slightly different directions. The directions say that they, stuff on the floor down here. The directions say that they want to know what all the question marks are. And if it's proportional, what is the similarity? So here, we know that these are parallel because they gave me the little parallel symbols. So that would mean that if this is X degrees, which is what they told me it was, they said it was X, that this one down here must also be X degrees because they're parallel cut by a transversal. So that's that. Over here, this angle, which they did not ask me for, but we're going to talk about anyway. This angle over here must be 180 minus that 80 means that it's going to be 100 minus that X. So this one must be 100 minus X. So that means this one over here is 100 minus X. Didn't talk about it, didn't ask for it, but I gave it to them anyway. Just saying. Trying to cover all of my bases. Now, we know, because I've told you, that if that's the case, that my sides are also going to be proportional. So my big triangle must be the one that matches up with my little triangle. I know that because this is 80 degrees and this is X, right? That's my little triangle. And then in my big triangle, this is 80 degrees and this is X. And all they said I had to have was two angles. But it turns out that that's 180, I mean 100 minus X, and that one's 100 minus X. So I got my three angles anyway. So since that's the case, I can go ahead and write triangle ABC is similar to triangle ADE making sure that my B matches up with my D kind of thing. Got to be careful about that. Then they want our missing side up there. So they said that this was eight and making sure I wrote it right. And that this little part here is 14, but they didn't tell us anything about that little part there. What they told us about was the little triangle and the great big triangle. So my little triangle side might be eight, but my great big triangle side is going to be the eight plus the 14. And eight plus 14 is 22, right? Yes, 22. So that means that 8 over 22 has to equal 10, because it's my little triangle, over whatever this is. 
well, if I let this be X or I'll let it be Y since I've already talked about an X. If I let that be Y, then 10 plus Y is what that side is going to be. Now I've got a little bit of a proportion I can solve. And I get 80 plus 8Y has to equal 220. Subtract the 80 from both sides. 8Y is equal to 140. Divide both sides by 8. Y is equal to a big number. I don't like that. I gotta figure it out now. Right. A goes into 14 one time with six left over. A goes into 60, not even. Seven times with a half left over. It's almost eight. I think it's 17.5. You're kind of a calculator. You can, you can figure it out. But I'm saying this is 17.5 is what my line is. Now, we've stated the congruence. We found all the missing parts. This one we knew was true by angle, angle, angle. Or angle, angle. That's what they're called. You can call it either one. I know what it is. I'm good with it. So make sure you give the reason as well as this. These are the things they're kind of looking for, and then the missing numbers are kind of inconsequential, um, unless that's all they're asking you for for the problem. So for number nine, which is also in the classwork exercises, they give you two different triangles. They tell you this one is a right angle and they give you some sides. They don't tell you this one is a right angle, but it kind of looks like a right angle and they threw up some sides. If this one were a right angle, which side is the hypotenuse? Well, this 10 is the hypotenuse, which means on um, this, I know that because it's the longest side. So 10 is the hypotenuse. Up here, my longest side is the 15. So if I set my 10, because I do smaller or large, if I set my 10 over 15, that would have to equal looking for the smallest side up here now. That's 9, and my smallest side here is 6. 6 over 9, because they're easy to find, larges and small. Then my missing side, the one that's in the middle, must be the 12 for down here. And my missing side up here is 8. So now the question becomes 10 over 5 is 2 over 3. And then 6 over 9 is 2 over 3. And then 8 over 12 is 2 over 3. So yes, this is proportional. So it's proportional by side, 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 which means that they must be similar triangles. So now I have to write them as similar triangles. Make sure you match up the right side. So by side, 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 we have the triangle. And I told you your book is always going to go with the one they see first. So like when they're doing this one, they give you that triangle before they would give you that one. It's just what your book does. Um, they would give you the little teeny tiny one before they give you the great big one. Because you see the little teeny tiny one before you get to I mean, visually. And then here they're going to give you the big one before they give you the small one. So that means I'm going to have to do the small and the big because that's the way I roll. So, I mean, it doesn't matter which one is which. So I'm going to say... E O P Q, so I can do it in alphabetical order. O P Q is similar to triangle. O down here 
was between my hypotenuse and my middle side. Up here, my hypotenuse is 15. We said my middle side was 12. So that must correspond to my N. P down here was my right angle, which must be my L up there, which means my other one is my M. So OPQ is similar to triangle NLM. And they wanted some other sides. So they asked for P, which we know must be our right angle. M, we just said, corresponded to Q. So Q must be the X, which means this one down here, since we took 90 away from it already, must be 90 minus X. And that's what they asked us for. And that's what it is. Just that simple. Which brings us to the classwork and homework. So, you have it from two separate pages. The first page was 270 something or other. Two seventy nine, and then you have the problems from page two eighty five. For the classwork from two seventy nine, you have number two, and for the homework, you have number six. For the classwork from page two eighty four, you have one, five, and nine. And for the homework, you have three and seven. So that you can tell what it is. Mm -hmm. I wrote a little high this time, huh? Okay. Anyway, there it is. Have a lovely day. Finish it up. One more section to go. Bye.